But Nero, again, if you pick one of the alternate spellings for Nero, you can get his name to match 616 as well. So he's like a favorite candidate. But a lot of scholars feel that it's kind of cheating to, to just pick pick your language and get your name, you know? <laughs> like that, that's essentially what you're doing. Um, in verse 18, this calls for wisdom. Let the one who has understanding calculate the number of the beast for its number. It is the number of a man and his number 666. Okay, we know mm -hmm. that. My commentary here talks about how, and I know sometimes we've, we've said, well, 666 is kind of like the, you know, it's the less than 777, the perfection. Mm -hmm. But I have a, in my commentary here, it says, um, the invitation to one with understanding to calculate this number, however, suggests the use of Gematria, I Gematria, guess that's the way you yeah. say that, an mm -hmm. ancient code using the numerical values of letters. Both Beast and Nero Caesar, written in Hebrew characters, add up to 666. Many interpreters expect a future greater fulfillment. So my question around this is, mm -hmm. what does this really mean when it says to calculate the number? Is this something that we should be doing for the future? Did this already happen? You know, or is mm -hmm. it one of those already but not yet? Yeah. The the thing. Let's let's talk about the thing with Nero first. Nero, I know. <laughs> you instigator, you. <laughs> it 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 depends on the way you spell Nero's name, which actually gets different spellings in Hebrew, Aramaic, and Latin. And Nero has been a popular candidate for the Antichrist, not only because with one of those that you just mentioned, you can calculate the number of his name. By the, by the way, gematria is the, is the practice, and lots of languages used it, where you would take the letters of the alphabet, like the first 10 letters of the alphabet in Hebrew are numbers one through 10. You assign numbers to the letters of the alphabet and so on and so forth for all your alphabetic numbers. And then when you read, when you see a name or a phrase, you can, do the math. You can, you can just put the numerical equivalence in there and you come out with a number and it may mean something or may not. But with, with Nero, he's a popular candidate because there are some manuscripts of Revelation 13, 18 that do not read 666. They read 616. Let me, let me see if ESV has done its job here. Ah, look at that, some manuscripts 616. So I, I don't know the editor here, but good job, whoever you are. But Nero, again, if you pick one of the alternate spellings for Nero, you can get his name to match 616 as well. So he's like a favorite candidate. But a lot of scholars feel that it's kind of cheating to, to just pick, pick your language and get your name, you know? <laughs> like that, that's essentially what you're doing. Um, you know, other commentators like Beale will, will, will make the comment that you can take this phrase, number of a man, and you could translate it human number. And then that takes you down the other road that you mentioned about the significance of a number less than 777. Okay, and 888 is Jesus, 777 is God. And I mean, there, there were different numbers that, that, that meant, you know, a standard of holiness or perfection. And, and if you're thinking, you know, these people were just crazy. I mean, first we get this astronomy stuff and now all this number symbolism. Okay, they were, they were serious about this in the first century because they had different reasons, but, but some wanted to encrypt ideas into names and numbers for their own safety. Um, there's, there's some speculation that Revelation does some of that. If, if you think especially that Revelation is a book that was written before the destruction of the temple. And it's, and it's a polemic on Rome. Even if you don't have to be a preterist and think it's all fulfilled, you, you can still be a, something of a futurist. But if you think that there are things in the book that are directed against the emperor and the Romans, yeah, you would probably encrypt that rather than just put it in the text and then take the consequences. You know, the Romans are knocking at your door the next day. So there, there's a certain logic to it and it, it was used for secrecy. Some of it was esoteric, mystical thinking, you know, trying to communicate theological ideas with numbers and stuff like that. 
um, lest you think it's really strange. I mean, we do this, the same thing with number three. What do we associate three with? The Trinity. You know, I mean, there are just things like this that, that are somewhat familiar to us. But in, in their culture, there was just more of it, you know, more of that kind of thing going on. So I don't, you know, is it an already or not yet? I don't really see the number itself as, as fitting into really the already category because I'm not sold on the book of Revelation A being written, you know, early. I mean, you, 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 to, to, to view this as fulfilled, like the number already existed in real time, you'd pretty much have to commit yourself to a, an, an early, you know, date of authorship because then you would go to Revelation 11 and you'd say, see, there's the, the courts of the temple mentioned there. The temple must still be standing. And so this has to be written before 70 AD. And then the outcome of this is 70 AD and, you know, we're, it's no longer prophecy. Then you, you could take that and say, well, Daniel 11 talked about this antichrist figure who now we think is Nero because Revelation's written before 70. But see, Daniel could have said, well, you know, the fulfillment of this has already happened with Antiochus, but now we know it's Nero, and so maybe it'll ripple out again in the future. Maybe there will be a, a not yet. Maybe there'll be somebody else down the road who'll be a new Nero or a new anti. You know, there are just ways to, to no matter what system you adopt, you can say it's either all fulfilled or it's all future, it's a little bit of both. I just don't see anything in the text that helps answer that question specifically with the number because the answer to it is gonna hinge on really what you think about the, the authorship. And I, I'm still a late dater, you know, the, the mid 90s. I think that's the best date explanation, but it's not secure by any means. It, there's, there's a couple church fathers mention it, but there are a couple church fathers that, that thought it was, it was early too. I mean, there's just, there's no way you can really pull anything conclusive out, you know, about the date of the book.